Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in between. Guess what time it is? Cue the music. That's right. Welcome to the overanalysis of the Blackwell Convergence. Let's begin. It's always remarkable to see just how much the 2D graphics improve with each release in the Blackwell series. Not to say that the previous games were ugly or anything, but it's pretty obvious that Wajidai Games is definitely reinvesting in itself and really upping their production quality. Hello? Anybody there? You really expecting an answer. I should also point out that we got a new voice actress here. Although, if you play the remaster of the Blackwell Legacy, it's the same voice actress as in the Blackwell Convergence. But nevertheless, from here on out, Rebecca Whitaker is the voice of Rosangela Blackwell. But voice acting aside, the game starts you off in a room, and you're looking for a ghost. Yeah, it's pretty open. It seems like Dave Gilbert definitely learned from the mistakes of his past and just gave the player complete control over this room within the first few minutes of the game. But before you can say Spectre, we uncover the arm of a ghost and go out to talk to him. Joey finds out that this guy used to be a book publisher who worked in this very building. But his business went belly up, so he's now on the ledge contemplating suicide. And since he's a ghost, well, you can tell how that went. So now we gotta convince him that he's dead. And we have two options here. Either we can convince him he's dead by convincing him to live and not to jump, and then he'll realize he's dead, which sounds kind of cruel to me. Or we can just push him off, and then he'll realize when he's not falling that, well... He's dead already. So that means you got two ways to approach this puzzle. No, it doesn't affect the overarching narrative which choice you make, but it does add a little bit of spice. And here's the option that I went with. You're just a little man with a big office and a view he doesn't deserve. And you're way too old and tired to start over. Yeah, what's the point? I don't know what to do anymore. Oh, I think you do. I do? You're looking right down at it. You're right. You're so right. It's over. It's... This is it. Huh? Oh! I've been here before. I'm sorry. But it was an accident! I wasn't really going to jump! I was going to go back in! It's too late now. I slipped and fell! I didn't want to jump! Yeah, this game started off with an accidental suicide. Talk about a depressing way to begin your game. But if you ever played a Blackwell game, you know the song and dance from here. We take him into our brain, and then he goes into the light. And then we get the intro credits. Again, I am very impressed with the production quality. That is some impressive art. This is an impressive intro sequence, especially considering they made it using the AGS game engine. This took some time, and unfortunately I've completely cut it out. But nevertheless, it's mesmerizing. Not our best work, but we got him in the end. Hey, results are results, and there's something a little bit cruel about convincing a man to live and then convincing him that he's dead. So Joey and Rosa chat for a while, and they pretty much decide that their day is done. Although, there's something nagging at Rosa. And it's like a puzzle. We gotta find out what it is by clicking on stuff and learning about her personal life. Like, she's trying to get a book about ghosts published, but it's just not working out for her. But eventually, she realizes what she's forgetting. 7 p.m. The Park Gallery with Nishanti. Oh, crap. What time is it? 7.15, damn it! She's going to kill me! That's right, folks. We gotta make our way to an art gallery opening. Because that's what we do. We go to art gallery openings and hunt ghosts. And somehow this pays the bills. But unfortunately, we just can't waltz over to the art gallery because we don't know the address. So you know what that means? That's right, we're going to look it up on our Google machine. Which should be expected. After all, this is a Dave Gilbert game. You're going to be looking stuff up on your computer a lot. And while it's easy to make fun of, admittedly this is a nice way to introduce players to this very important game mechanic that you're going to have to be using throughout this game. But nevertheless, thanks to the power of knockoff Google, we now know where to go, and we go there with our ghost buddy, because he can't stay at home. Wow, I feel cultured already. Shh! Hi, are you here for the opening? Yes. Great! But I'm sorry, I think you came on the wrong night. The public opening's in two days. Tonight's a private showing. I don't know why she sounds so snooty. If anything, she should be happy. After all, there's only four people here at this private party. And one of them's the artist, the other's the owner of the gallery, and then there's just two ladies just hanging out here, away from them. Like they don't even want to be around them. I don't know, maybe she's holding out that a bunch more people are going to show up. 
Perhaps you got a lot of maybes on all those Facebook invitations she sent out. Anyway, I'm Josie Park, and this is the Park Gallery. Man, she's clever. I bet she came up with that all by herself. Well, it's pretty damn obvious that Joey does not like this lady one damn bit. But fortunately for Joey, we really don't need to waste our time talking to this lady. Instead, we can move on to where the action is, and that's our neighbor lady who is chatting up some other lady. You know, the neighbor lady that led us into our building in the very first game. And yeah, she keeps opening doors for us. After all, we wouldn't be able to get this gallery opening without her. So who's your friend? I'm sorry, that was rude of me. This is Monique Stallman. Monique, this is my neighbor, Rosa, the one I was telling you about. You were talking about me? She was just telling me that she had a famous writer for a neighbor. Famous? Well, Rosangela Blackwell may not be Mario, but still she gets some fan art made about her, so I'd say she's kind of famous. Oh, Monique here has a fascinating ghost story to tell. I wouldn't call it fascinating, per se. Please, it sends shivers down my spine. Wait until you hear it. It's about Frank Lyons. Frank Lyons? The actor? Nish, please. Sorry, Monique, just getting carried away. Now, naturally, because we're a ghost hunter, we are keen on listening to any ghost story that we hear. Also, too, we can't leave this room until we hear the ghost story. Yeah, this little tale kickstarts the game's entire plot. Well, all right, but let's not talk about it here. Here's my card. If you want to talk, drop by my office tomorrow. We can discuss it in private. Thanks, I'll drop by. So with a fresh quest in the back of our brains, we can now jet on out of here, or decide to stay. I know it's just like a telltale game, we're faced with a barrage of choices. They do actually have a mild impact on the game. No, I'd better go. Thank you. You sure? Yeah, I'm kind of tired, but thanks anyway. You do look worn out. Alright, go home and rest. Try not to work so hard, okay? Life's too short. Yeah, tell me about it. Now, if you decide to stay, well, Rosa starts hitting the wine. I mean, that's exactly what she does. She gets drunk and kind of embarrasses herself. So some of the characters will remember that and kind of be like, Hey, you got drunk. I know our choices actually have consequences in this game. What happened? How did I get here? Yeah, kind of spooky, huh? We inside our brain somehow. My, my. You have grown up so much. What? Who are you? Someone who has been here far too long. I don't understand. It does not matter. We will meet again soon. Continue your sleep. You will forget me when you wake up. Your time will come soon. Now this is a personal pet peeve of mine, but I always dislike it when a story has these type of moments in it. Where the character doesn't know something happened, but the viewer does. I mean, we just saw it happen, game. Why you gotta pretend like, oh, you won't remember this? We just saw it. It kind of feels like when a judge tells a jury, hey, you stricken that. You know, you didn't hear that bit, even though you had just heard it. And it bothers me all the more, considering that this is a video game, and we actually have control over this character, so we can make decisions based upon the knowledge we have. But hey, it's a personal pet peeve. Some of you may like it a lot. Hey, you're up. Good morning. It's a bright new day and we've got a brand new ghost to nab. Yeah, I know. Tick tock, doll. Let's get moving. Well, Joey, we don't exactly know whether or not there's going to be a ghost yet. But yeah, there's going to be a ghost. But we just can waltz over to this lady that we need to talk to. First, we got to look at her business card. Which then opens up her location. I know, it's like this game really wants to drive home the fact that you're going to have to look at stuff in order to get anywhere in it. Hi, Monique? Oh, hello. You're Nishanti's friend, aren't you? The writer? Yeah, that's me. You left early last night. Yeah, sorry. I was kind of tired. No need to make excuses. I wish I had the judgment to leave like you did. I had to endure that place for three more hours. Ah, oh, the problems of the bourgeoisie. I had to spend three hours in an art gallery drinking wine and eating cheese. Oh, you had to pull a double shift just to be able to afford rent. <laughs> now I'll just sit behind my desk and tell you a ghost story about an actor named Frank Loins who died while filming his last scene in the movie that she apparently executive produced. It was tragic and all, but in the end we had to finish the movie. We found a lookalike to complete the scene and then released it. That should have been the end of it. But the film was a smash hit. Really? It was that good? No, it wasn't. People only turned up because a man's death was attached to it. For years we tried to create a moneymaker. And this is how we did it. Be careful what you wish for, Rosangela. That's all I'll say. So what happened next? Next? I hear him. You hear him? Over in Central Park, near the Gothic Bridge. It's where he died. 
Well, let's kick it into gear and go over there because clearly they're gonna be a ghost. And sure enough, there's a ghost. Are you Frank Lyons? You recognize me? Sure. That's... That's... Thank, thank you. you. That, that means, means a lot. lot. Hey, I live to please. Sort of. So we chit-chat with Frank for a while, get to know how his day is going, and then realize we can't do anything for him yet because he's just not convinced that he's dead. I was... hmm... Funny thing. Yes? The Minetta. The Minetta? Yeah, I was there. I'm always there. So yeah, we're picking up a lot of notes. A very familiar gameplay mechanic in the Blackwell series. For those of you not familiar, notes are like items, but not. Kind of. It's a cool element. The Minetta. I'm famous there, you know. You can always find a willing ear there, and some donations for the fund. The fund? What fund? Yes, they are very kind. Why are you talking like that? Talking like what? So in case you couldn't tell by that crazy little outburst by Frank, there's some crazy banana pants things going on here, and we are just too ill-equipped to deal with any of it, because we just don't have enough notes. We just don't know enough about the situation. So naturally that means we gotta wander around the world and Google some stuff. And eventually we find our way to that bar. You know, the bar the crazy pants other guy inside of Frank was talking about, and ask the bartender some questions about it. Sure, ask away. Have you ever heard of Joe Gould, or anything called the Joe Gould Fund? <laughs> yeah, you could say that. Sometimes I think they should just rename this place the Joe Gould Bar and be done with it. Really? People hear about him and they come in here to ask about him. That's his portrait up there behind you. He died a long time ago. Who was he? He was some homeless guy who wandered the West Village in the 50s and 60s. He told some crazy stories and people found him entertaining, so they gave him money for his food and his beer. He referred to the money as the Joe Gould Fund. He also tried to write a book or something. He never finished it? Nope. Hey, sounds like your soulmate. And the sound of that rain means we've made some progress in the game. And also, this is a real tavern, and that dude, the guy inside of Frank, the Joel Ghoul dude, he was a real dude. Yeah, we got Wikipedia pages and everything. So we make our way back to Monique, because it's raining, the cat is now inside of this building. Now you're thinking, why the hell do we care that a cat is inside this room? Well, you see, that cat belonged to Frank, and it has Frank's address on it. We gotta do a little bit of B&E, breaking and entering, folks. Okay, maybe I shouldn't just glaze by the whole cat puzzle and talk about it a little bit. To be honest with you, it's not that bad of a puzzle. It sounds crazy when you say you have to wander around the map and learn about stuff until it starts raining, and then you can go inside an office and look at a cat's collar so you can find the address of Frank Lloyd so you can investigate his house to find more information about him and to talk to him some more. But it's all very intuitive, because you see, once you go back to Monique after it starts raining, the cat's inside and it's being a dick to you, so it's naturally attracting your attention. And then you realize that Joey could be friends with it, and then you can look at it and find the collar with the address and it just kind of all snowballs from there. Really not a terrible puzzle. Just kind of crazy when you write it all down. All right, with all that cleared up, now let's break into Frank's house. Once again, it's up to the dead guy to sort things out. Be my guest. Yeah, it really pays to have a ghost buddy sometimes. You can just walk through walls and peruse a house. No doubt earlier in Joey's ghosting career, he took in some voyeurism. But nevertheless, the most important thing for us to find in here is the film script, which we read. Why do we need to read the film script? Well, in order to convince dear Frank that he's dead, we gotta reenact the scene that he was filming when he died. And then when they say cut, you, well, yeah, you can tell what's going to happen. You sure this guy was in pictures? He didn't even have a hot tub. Was he supposed to? If I was in pictures, I'd have a hot tub. Well, naturally. Although, I did find something interesting. What? There was a piece of paper just lying on a table. Do you remember what was on it? Of course I do. Sounds like a film script. Probably the last thing he worked on before he died. You ever hear these lines in a flick before? No. I haven't gone to the movie since, well, you. Eh, makes no difference. It's probably not important. Yeah, as I said before, it is kind of important. And in fact, it's the only way to free Frank's soul. No, we couldn't have just have Googled the last scene of the movie and watched it on YouTube. Or just try to find a copy of the script somewhere online because, well, I'm sure those websites exist. But nevertheless, let's save a man. He's a good man, Zack, and he needs me. And what about me? You don't need me, Zack. You never did. Huh? That's not in the script. Wait, Wait let's, let's talk, talk about, about this. 
Just forget me. Be free. Yvonne. Wait. Yvonne. Yvonne. Yvonne? All right. Finished. Finally. Hey, Monique, when's the rap party again? Monique? Where is she? Where is everybody? Hey, come on, guys. This is weird. Where did everybody go? Come on, guys. Where are you? Well, now we gotta switch over to Joey and talk to this man ghost to ghost. Oh, I'm dead, aren't I? Yeah. I'm a ghost and I'm haunting my last film shoot. That's so... cliché. I'm sorry, Frank. I really am. So what now? Just relax and take a hold of this. Okay, do it. Ow! I gotta work on my landings. It's so bright. It should hurt my eyes, but it doesn't. I don't think it's real light. I'm not sure what it is. It's beautiful. Just head towards it, Frank. That's all you need to do. You know, my very first acting role was a ghost. I was eight years old. We put on a Halloween play in the third grade. I played Scary Ghost Number 3. Funny the things you remember. It wasn't a bad life, was it? I might not have made it big, but I made it somewhere. How many can say the same, huh? You're bigger than you think. Really? The movie was a big hit. Everyone knows your name now. They do? Figures. I'm famous, and all I had to do was get choked to death. Yeah. Wait, what? You weren't choked. You had a heart attack. No, I was choked. I remember it distinctly. The news reports all said it was a heart attack. No disrespect, but I think I know how I died. The large hands around my neck? You don't forget a thing like that. Why would the press lie about how you died? I don't know. You think that they'd love a story about a murder. Funny. It doesn't even bother me. I think I'm ready to go. Wait, hold on a second. No can do. I gotta fly. See you around. And thanks. Just a few questions. Damn it. Ooh, now ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in between, what an enticing and exciting twist. We thought he had a heart attack, but he was choked to death in front of people. Ooh, how fascinating. What's gonna happen? What's gonna happen? Well, you're gonna have to wait and see for the next part of the over-analysis of the Blackwell Convergence. It's gonna get good, folks. It's gonna get good.